I think we're at a tipping point, really. Uh, last couple of years, um, his side have been working with a lot of uh, semiconductor vendors who were getting into simulating DDR5, but not so many um, system design houses. So, but what's happened in the last, you know, over the last year is uh, Intel's come out with a new chipset, Alder Lake, that um, supports DDR5. And so even at this show at DesignCon, we've seen uh, papers where people have built DDR5 systems. So it's a turning point, and I think there's going to be uh, many, many more designs um, starts this year. But for DDR4, going into DDR5 is a big um, technology change. One of the things you have to be careful with is that um, you can't leverage the DDR4 designs and just expect them to work for DDR5. So it's a redesign, and at that point, uh, the signal integrity engineer needs to start with uh, a good pre-layout design. Because what pre-layout enables you to do is you can put together um, transmission lines and vias, um, parameterize them and adjust them, kind of explore that design space to find out if I'm going to have enough design margin. Um, and that's quite critical for DDR5 because there's a possibility that uh, you could end up with a completely closed eye at the input to the receiver. I think that's one of the biggest changes from DDR4 to DDR5. They've got equalization now on the receiver, and so um, the signal coming in could be could be uh, completely closed out. But after equalization, it recovers the signal, and we, we actually have a, a good win. So the simulation tools have changed, and the way you go about um, testing and measuring has changed. So for simulation now, they moved away from using uh, traditional SPICE simulation. We use more channel simulation now to look at DDR5, um, where you can actually see the effects of the equalization. Um, and then when it comes to measurement, now they've, uh, they've built uh, a new set of interposers, which uh, try to keep the crosstalk at minimum. Um, and then the scope itself, um, Keysight's uh, uh, UXA uh, low noise scope, we're able to uh, recover the signal, but even if it's closed, you can apply equalization inside the scope to open the eye up and make sure that you can actually um, receive the signal properly. So that's probably the biggest changes in the technology, um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting work and uh, you know, it has the possibility to be you know, twice as fast as the fastest speed grade of DDR4 once we get to the upper limits. Uh, one of the biggest changes, I think, is that um, as we start to move faster, we need to be more careful about uh, crosstalk. So crosstalk in the BGA pin field, that's where these uh, signals are going to connect into the, uh, the pads that the, the device would rest upon. Um, you're going to have more crosstalk in that pin field. So the number of ground vias and the location of those ground vias is going to be important. Um, you can't always get a, away from the additional crosstalk there's going to be, but at least you need to be able to simulate it to estimate how much uh, impact crosstalk is going to be on the signal. Um, the other aspect is about um, the length of the traces, length matching. So DDR5 is still you know, parallel bus, just like um, the DDR4 was. Uh, so it's critical that you take into account how much transmission line length is inside the package of the device, and you're given that information up front. And then when you go to layout, you try to um, account for it or, um, uh, yeah, so uh, working with the package length and then making sure that the rest of the signals you create, that the, the, your signals are still time aligned at the end. But we use meanders and serpentines, and the electrical length of those and the physical length is slightly different. So even though you've laid it out, you do want to be able to verify with an EM simulator to make sure that the signals are definitely going to be time aligned as they enter into the receiver. So, so as we move, uh, you know, move away from memory now and talk about high-speed serial, um, let's say 16 gigabit per second, uh, it's like a PCI Express Gen 4 type of uh, link. Um, one of the key things, we, had a, we actually had a survey with um, some uh, PCB designers, we asked them how many of them actually optimized the vias that they, that they use. And um, two thirds said that they, they don't. You know, they, they have a, a good standard VIA model that they use and use for pretty much uh, uh, all the, the high speed traces, all the designs. Um, this is an opportunity when you get to 16 gigabit per second and even faster, there's an opportunity to take a look at um, adjusting the, uh, the anti pad clearance size, which would adjust the capacitance of the VIA, and then um, 
how many and the location of the ground stitching we use. So the more ground stitching we use you add, you get lower inductance. And um, if you uh, bring them in closer to the signal views, you'll end up getting um, you know, less inductance. And this is a balance between uh, how much capacitance you need, how much inductance. You're trying to balance them so that you end up with um, uh, your target desired impedance for the VR that would match the signal trace that's coming into it. Uh, and so, you know, I've got a paper um, you know, later in the day where we kind of talk about that and you can get like uh, 50 millivolts extra eye height just by paying more careful attention to um, you know, the transmission line impedance, matching it to the VIA, um, and, and uh, come up with a good, more optimal design. So we come back to that example about PCI Express Gen 4, um, taking that design to something like Gen 5. Uh, I may design this PCB, but it's not the whole system. You know? So I take this uh, add-in card, and I've got to go and put it into a main board and, uh, and the signal's got to get all the way from this board all the way to the receiver. But I didn't design the main board, I don't design the connector, so how do you make sure that the thing that you design is actually going to work? Um, that's something that we've, uh, like QSET's trying to solve. Um, we've created a, a library of uh, PCI Express Gen 5 um, reference channels, so you can kind of do some uh, budgeting. So you've got your design, but then I've got a model for a connector and a model for the main board and then a model for the package. Things which I don't control, but if I can put them into my system simulation, I can simulate the whole system together and make sure that my design is going to work uh, in whichever configuration it needs to. Because sometimes it's just a, a single add-in card into a main board, but it could easily be single board, main board, and then another add-in card. So you need to uh, you need to check for all these different um, scenarios of how you will design the So um, our primary uh, flagship product is uh, Pathwave ADS, it's Advanced Design System. Um, that's a very, very uh, big design environment that inside it, you've got a lot of useful tools. So if you're designing VIAs, we use a VIA designer. It's a three-dimensional uh, view, but everything's parameterized. So you just kind of uh, type in the width and spacing of the different clearance holes and pads, and it will uh, change it, extract the model, and then you can use that into, into your uh, schematic simulation. Um, for the things like memory design, uh, the, the product inside of ADS is called Memory Designer, so nice easy to remember, but, um, but that's what you use for being able to do the pre-layout and then the full system design for, for memory. Um, uh, and then when you do talk about EM extraction, if it's signal integrity, then it's SI Pro, and if it's uh, power integrity, we use uh, PI Pro. Um, and maybe just mention one brand new thing we have at the show, which is for Power integrity, we have a new conducted EMI analysis. And that's very interesting because usually that's something that takes a long time to set up. That's why engineers shy away from uh, doing that kind of analysis. But uh, you know, literally just a couple of minutes, you can go from a DC analysis you've set up and then just copy it over to um, this new conducted EMI analysis. Everyone really needs to be checking that they're going to pass a conducted EMI um, spec and this enables you a chance to fix the problems before you get further down the path and actually build a prototype. So that's what we, uh, we have at the show uh, this week.